Hello friends and welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. Today under the retail segment we will talk about retail maths. Well friends you might wonder whether I am going to teach you some mathematics out here. Not exactly but we will talk about certain calculations and certain things which are required in order to succeed and make profits in retail. So let's watch what is on the agenda. Well we will talk about different calculations required in a daily sales report like we will talk about the average bill size, the average basket size, the per square feet per day concept as well as how do you have conversion ratio. Understand the difference between the margin and the growth calculations. We will also talk about understanding the basics of profit and loss account. So that is on the agenda today and let's start on the module. Well friends, a daily sales report or a DSR is the heart of any retail outlet. Let's understand what DSR is. Every retail store maintains a daily sales report which highlights the performance of that particular store and also helps you in monitoring how much profits and sales are you really making. If you are not making the kind of sales that you should be making, you need to put in a lot more efforts. A DSR helps you to understand that particular aspect. It is important to update your daily sales report every single day in order to track the performance of the store and also put in the kind of efforts to improve. So your daily sales report is the key to good retail maths. Let's talk about what is an average bill size. Well, you might have seen when you go for a shopping experience in any retail outlet, at the end of your shopping, you are getting a bill. Now on that bill, the particular product that you have bought is put as well as the price of that particular product. This is your average bill size. So this helps you to know the amount or the average amount of purchasing done by a customer in a particular retail store. So each customer buying whatever product, that single bill is known as the average bill size. To increase the value of the average bill size, the sales team needs to concentrate on selling more of high selling price of products as well as also trying to sell more product in each bill and that is how every salesperson can contribute by trying to sell a customer higher price of the same product and also trying to give him multiple products in terms of add-on selling as well as cross-selling. The formula for calculating the average bill side is the average bill size is equal to the total sales divided by the number of bills in the store and that is how you get the average bill size. Now let's look at another terminology known as average basket size. Well looking at the picture here you might wonder that do you have to fill up your basket and trolley with maximum products in order to get an average basket size? Well your answer is yes. The average basket size is helping us to know the average number of products being sold in each bill in a retail store. So the maximum amount of product you can get on your bill is your average bill size. To increase the value of average bill size or rather the average basket size, the sales team should concentrate on selling more products in each and every bill. Each person should try to do a lot of add-on selling and cross-selling in order to increase the number of products in one single bill and that is what is an average basket size. The formula for calculating the average basket size is total quantity sold divided by the number of bills for that particular customer. That is the formula for calculating the average basket size. Let's understand what is the concept of per square feet per day. Now each and every store which is there has to be occupied in terms of the space so that there is no space which is left empty because that is equal to loss of revenue for that particular store. This helps us to analyze the optimum utilization of store in a retail space. So what I'm trying to really say friends is each and every part of the store needs to be occupied. To increase the value of per square per feet day, we should make sure that every part of the store space is being utilized efficiently and you might need to make a lot of changes in the regular display. The visual merchandising might need to change every single day in order to have optimum utilization of space. Let's calculate the formula for per square feet 
per day is equal to the per day total sales divided by the total square feet area of that particular store. When you do this formula, you come to know what is the per square feet per day for that particular retail outlet. Now let's look at what is the concept of conversion ratio. Well, conversion ratio helps you to understand or know the percentage of walk-in customers who are actually going to buy from the store. For example, if you have 100 customers walking into the store in a particular day, then what is the percentage of people who are actually buying from the store helps you to understand the conversion ratio. You might have seen friends in many of the retail outlets, there is a security person standing at the entry of the egg of the particular store trying to uh, you know punch in every time a customer walks into the store. So that helps you to understand how many conversions have taken place as to how many people have actually bought from the particular store. To increase the conversion ratio, it is important that all the customers are attended to as well as leading to sales or conversion. So each and every staff of the retail store needs to talk to the customer, need to convert the customer to ensure that even a walk-in customer is left with a bag full of goodies. Well, the formula to calculate the conversion rate is equal to number of bills divided by the total walk-ins into 100. That is the formula for you to understand what is the conversion ratio for that particular retail store. Let's understand what is the margin. Now, I'm sure you all have heard anytime a particular shopkeeper or shop owner say that ma'am or sir, we have very less margin on this particular product. So let's understand what exactly do they mean by margin. It is the difference between the sale price and the cost price of a particular product. So the formula is sale price minus the cost price. That is equal to the margin. For example, if a retailer has bought in terms of the cost price of a particular product is say 100 and he sells it as a sale price of 150. So what is the margin for that particular customer or rather the margin for that particular shop owner is 150 minus 100 is equal to 50 rupees is his margin which he has kept as a profit for himself. When a retail store offers discounts and offers on a particular product, the margin definitely gets reduced by a little chunk of it. But the overall earnings are increasing because of the increased volume of sale triggered because of the discounts. So all the stores, whenever they're offering sale as well as discount of say 20% or 50%, what they're really doing is reducing the margin but however, what is increasing is the number of footfalls and the number of people who are buying the product increases because of these discounts. Let's understand what is the growth for in terms of retail mats. Now, every retail owner of a store wants to grow and wants to make profit. So growth of a particular retail store is measured by comparing its sale of last year to the sale of this year at the same time. For example, if you have understood the sale of April 2016 and you have to compare it with the sale of April 2017, you will understand what has been the growth for your retail outlet from last year, same month to this year, same month. Every store targets a particular percentage of growth every year considering factors like inflation, increase in manpower, advertising cost, marketing cost, etc. So as a retail staff owner or retail shop owner, you need to understand how much have you really grown in order to make profits. Let's understand a very important component of retail math, which is understanding what profit and loss or PLL is all about. Well, there are three different aspects to PNL, which is your revenue, you have your cost and you have EBIT, which is your earning before interest and tax. That is what EBIT stands for, earning before interest and tax. Now, to make a good profit or to understand losses, these three components are very important because your revenue is the total amount of profits that you have made or the total amount of money coming your way. The cost which you incur in terms of manpower, cost in terms of electrical charges, water supply, etc. So the and even salaries of the employees, etc. come under cost. Now, when you calculate EBIT, it helps you to understand how much of profit and loss have you really made as a shop owner. 
So let's understand the basics about PNL. Well, to calculate the revenue, what you need to do is the net margin has to be totaled or plus with the other total income, which will help you to understand the revenue for that particular store. However, to know the store EBIT, which is your earning before interest as well as taxes, you have to do something like total revenue minus the total expenses, which will understand or give you the total store EBIT. This is very important in order to know how much profits are you making or how much loss are you really incurring to put in the kind of efforts to overcome your losses and make profits. Well, friends, that brings us to a conclusion of this particular module on retail maths. I hope you have not got confused by doing so many calculations and mathematics. However, we have enjoyed teaching you this particular module. Do keep watching and thank you for watching us.